Hare Krishna, so we are continuing with the Nectar of Instruction by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This is Shravanam Diaries Podcast and I'm your host, Sulalita Devidasi. So we are reading text 2, page number 17. Human life is meant for God realization. And the human being is given higher intelligence for this purpose. Those who believe that this higher intelligence is meant to attain a higher state should follow the instructions of the Vedic literatures. By taking such instructions from higher authorities, one can actually become situated in perfect knowledge and give real meaning to life. In Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.9, Sri Sutta Goswami describes the proper human dharma in this way. Dharma syahya pavargasya nartor thayo pakalpate nardhasya dharma ikantasya kamola bayahi smrita. Quote, all occupational engagements dharma are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. Furthermore, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service, dharma, should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification." The first step in human civilization consists of occupational engagements performed according to the scriptural injunctions. The higher intelligence of a human being excuse me, the higher uh-huh, of a human being should be trained to understand basic Dharma. In human society there are various religious concepts characterized as Buddhist, Hindu, Christian, Hebrew, Mohammedan, and so on, for without religion, human society is no better than animal society. As stated above, Dharmasya Hyapavargasya Narthor Tayo Pakalpate. Religion is meant for attaining emancipation, not for getting bread. Sometimes human society manufactures a system of so called religion aimed at material advancement. But this is far from the purpose of true religion, true dharma. Religion entails entails understanding the laws of God, because the proper execution of these laws ultimately leads one out of material entanglement. That is the true purpose of religion. Unfortunately, people accept religion for material prosperity because of atyahara or an excessive desire for such prosperity. True religion, true religion, however, instructs people to be satisfied with the bare necessities of life while cultivating Krishna consciousness. Even though we require economic development, True religion allows it only for supplying the bare necessities of material existence. The real purpose, purpose of life is to inquire about the absolute truth. If our endeavor, prayasa, is not to inquire about the absolute truth, we will simply increase our endeavor to satisfy our artificial needs. A spiritual aspirant should avoid mundane endeavor. Another impediment is prajalpa, unnecessary talking. When we mix with a few friends, we immediately begin in unnecessarily talking, sounding just like croaking toads. If we must talk, we should talk about the Krishna consciousness movement. 
Those outside of the Krishna consciousness movement are interested in reading heaps of newspapers, magazines and novels, solving crossword puzzles and doing many other nonsensical things. In this fashion, people simply waste their valuable time and energy. In the Western countries, old men retired from active life play cards, fish, watch television and debate about useless socio-political schemes. All these and other frivolous activities are included in the Prajalpa category. Intelligent persons interested in Krishna consciousness should never take part in such activities. Jhana, jhana Sangha refers to associating with persons not interested in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. One should strictly avoid such an association. Srila Narutam Das Thakur has therefore advised us to live only in the association of Krishna conscious devotees. Bhakta Sanevas. Oh, this is the song. Tadera charan sevi bhakta sanivas janame janame hai ei abilas. One should always engage in the service of the Lord in the association of the Lord's devotees. Association with those engaged in a similar line of business is very conducive to advancement in that business. Consequently, materialistic persons form various associations and clubs to enhance their endeavors. For example, in the business world we find such institutions as the stock exchange and chamber of commerce. Similarly, we have established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness to give people an opportunity to associate with those who have not forgotten Krishna. Wow, this is a nice definition. <laughs> yeah, because you you will find many different mm, devotees on many different levels in ISKCON, International Society of Krishna Conscious Prabhupada. He, uh, he said that if you associate, you will associate with those who have not forgotten Krishna. So that depends on which level of not forgotten. <laughs> wow, I love this one. This spiritual association offered by our ISKCON movement is increasing day by day. Yes, very true. Many people from different parts of the world join the society to awaken their dormant Krishna consciousness. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes in his Anuvritti commentary that too much endeavor to acquire knowledge on the part of mental speculators or dry philosophers falls within the category of atyahara, collecting more than needed. Hmm. Too much knowledge. Hey, this is for me. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, the endeavor of philosophical speculators to write volumes of books on dry philosophy devoid of Krishna consciousness is entirely futile. This is just something to be really appreciated right now because these days wherever you go people have their own philosophy, honestly. Like people create their own philosophies and they're preaching their way, like you know, in, in a very it sounds very intellectual, but it is devoid of the Supreme Lord, so it's not really efficient or beneficial in the eternal point of view. So this is really, 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 really relevant for all of us. The work of karmis who write volumes of books on economic development also falls within the category of Atyahara. Similarly, those who have no desire for Krishna consciousness and who are simply interested in possessing more and more material things, either in the shape of scientific knowledge 
or monetary gain are all included under the control of Atyahara. Karmis labor to accumulate more and more money for future generations only because they do not know their future position. Interested only in getting more and more money for their sons and grandsons, such foolish persons do not even know what their position is going to be in the next life. There are many incidences that illustrate this point. Once a great Karmi accumulated a vast fortune for his sons and grandsons, but later, according to his karma, he took his birth in a cobbler's house, located near the building which in the previous life he had constructed for his children. It so happened that when this very cobbler came to his former house, his former sons and grandsons beat him with shoes. Unless the Karmis and Gyanis become interested in Krishna consciousness, they will simply continue to waste their life in fruitless activities. Accepting some of the scriptural rules and regulations for immediate benefit, as utilitarians advocate, is called Niyamagraha. <laughs> and neglecting the rules and regulations of the Shastras, which are meant for spiritual development, is called Niyamagraha. So Niyamagraha and Niyamagraha. The word Agraha means eagerness to accept, and Agraha means failure to accept. By the addition of either of these two words to the word Niyama, rules and regulations, the word Niyamagraha is formed. Thus, Niyamagraha has a twofold meaning that is understood according to the particular combination of words, the beauty of Sanskrit. Those interested in Krishna consciousness should never be, should not be eager to accept rules and regulations for economic advancement. Yet they should very faithfully accept scriptural rules and regulations for the advancement of Krishna consciousness. They should strictly follow the regulative principles by avoiding illicit sex, meat eating, gambling and intoxication. One should also avoid association with Mayavadis, who simply blaspheme Vaishnavas, devotees. Bhuktikamis, who are interested in material happiness, Muktikamis, who desire liberation by merging in the existence of the formless absolute Brahman and Siddhi Kamis, who desire the perfection of mystic yoga practice, are classified as Atyaharis. To associate with such person is not at all desirable. Uh -huh. Desires to expand the mind by perfecting mystic yoga, merging in the existence of Brahman or attaining whimsical material prosperity are all included within the category of greed, laulia. All attempts to acquire such material benefits or so-called spiritual advancement are impediments on the path of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right. Modern warfare waged between capitalists and communists is due to their avoiding the advice of Srila Rupa Goswami regarding Atyahara. Modern capitalists accumulate more wealth than necessary, everyone will agree with this. And the communists, envious of their prosperity, want to nationalize all wealth and prosperity. Unfortunately, the communists do not know how to solve the problem of wealth and its distribution. Consequently, when the wealth of the capitalists falls into the hands of the communists, no solution results. Opposed to, the, to these two philosophies, 
The Krishna conscious ideology states that all wealth belongs to Krishna. Thus, unless all wealth comes under the administration of Krishna, there can be no solution to the economic problem of mankind. Nothing can be solved by placing wealth in the hands of the communists or the capitalists. If a 50-pound note is lying on the street, someone may pick it up and put it in his pocket. Such a man is not honest. Another man may see the money and decide to let it remain there, thinking that he should not touch another's property. Although the second man does not steal the money for his own purposes, he is unaware of its proper use. The third man who sees the 50-pound note may pick it up, find the man who lost it and deliver it to him. This man does not steal the money to spend for himself, nor does he neglect it and let it lie in the street. By taking it and delivering it to the man who has lost it, this man is both, both honest and wise. Simply transferring wealth from capitalists to communists cannot solve the problem of modern politics. For it has been demonstrated that when a communist gets money, he uses it for his own sense gratification. The wealth of the world actually belongs to Krishna, and every living entity, man and animal has the birthright to use God's property for his maintenance. When one takes more than his maintenance requires, be he a capitalist or a communist, he is a thief and as such he is liable to be punished by the laws of nature. Laws of nature The wealth of the world should be used for the welfare of all living entities, for that is the plan of mother nature. Everyone has the right to live by utilizing the wealth of the Lord. When people learn the art of scientifically utilizing the Lord's property, they will no longer encroach upon one another's rights. Haribo! Then an ideal society can be formed. The basic principle for such a spiritual society is stated in the first mantra of Sri Ishopanishad. Jai. Quote, everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things which necessary for himself, which are set aside as his quota. And one should not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. Krishna conscious devotees know very well that this material world is designed by the complete arrangement of the Lord. To fulfill all the necessities of life for all living beings. Without their having to encroach upon the life or rights of one another. This complete arrangement affords the proper quota of wealth for everyone according to his real needs, and thus everyone may live peacefully according to the principle of plain living and high thinking. Unfortunately, materialists who have neither faith in the plan of God nor any aspiration for higher spiritual development misuse their God-given intelligence only to augment their material possessions. Augment their material possessions. They devise many systems, such as capitalism and materialistic communism, to advance their material position. They're not interested in the laws of God or in a higher goal. Always anxious to fulfill their unlimited desires for sense gratification, they are conspicuous by their ability to exploit their fellow living beings. When human society gives up these 
elementary faults enumerated by Srila Rupa Goswami, Atyahara, etc. All enmity will cease between men and animals, capitalists and communists, and so forth. In addition, all problems of economic or material maladjustment and instability will be solved. This pure consciousness is awakened by the proper spiritual education and practice offered scientifically by the Krishna Consciousness Movement. This Krishna Consciousness Movement offers a spiritual community that can bring about a peaceful condition in the world. Every man, every intelligent man should purify his consciousness and rid himself of the above-mentioned six hindrances to devotional service by taking wholehearted shelter of this Krishna Consciousness Movement. Haribo! Thus ends text 2 and tomorrow we shall continue with, with the text 3. So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description and we shall see you next time. Hare Krishna.